hello, hello. Thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Cassandra and I just pressed the record button. So let me make sure that you can hear me on here before I get started because I'm about to be laying down some amazing information on Forex because seriously, you guys. All right, for those of, for, let, me, let me back up just a sec. For those who may not know me, my name is Cassandra and I am a programmer by day. That's my day job. I have a business in digital marketing coaching and um uh, now programming coaching <laughs> and I'm also learning Forex. I'm a budding Forex trader. I am not a professional at this. I'm simply sharing with you my journey and what I'm learning. Um, as you can read on this above statement, um, past results are not typical. Future results are uh, not dependent nor guaranteed by those past results. It is based off of your uh, investment in yourself and your education, your actions. So please be sure to speak with, with, with a financial advisor if you have any questions. Or you can ask me and I can tell you my opinion. But again, I'm not a licensed financial advisor. So um, what I want to cover today, let me go ahead and go about my notes here. All right, so why am I doing this? I am doing this because I just do not believe that there is any reason why we should have as much economic issues that we have. And there are so many opportunities for people to be able to create their dream life, but most people don't want to be salespeople. And that is the high, aside from this skill set, um, sales is the highest skill set or highest paid skill set in the world, right? Because it's based off of your actions. It's based off of what you do to create that income. But most people don't like, to, they don't like sales. They don't want to, uh, they either have a mental block about it or something like that, right? So they don't want to be sales. Well, Forex is the only skill set I have ever found ever that allows you to create your dream life without having to be a salesperson. You don't have to sell to anybody. You learn this skill set and you can basically, you know, earn or lose, right? Because there's always a risk with investment. You can earn or lose money 24 hours a day, five days a week, as long as you have the internet and your phone or laptop or something, right? It's amazing. So I am sharing this with you today because I don't believe that we have to be where we are today with our economy. I believe that when you have the knowledge to be able to improve your life, you are obviously more equipped to be able to create change in your life and therefore it will cause a positive ripple effect. So I want to make sure that the things that I've accumulated over the last however many years of my life gets out there to people because most people do not know about this. It wasn't available to people like you and me until about 20 years ago because prior to that, which was the internet, there was no way for us to be able to, to use this. You had to have like, first of all, millions of dollars just to get involved and you had to actually live near one of the trade houses. So now with the invention of the internet and everything else, it's very inexpensive to get started. I think the, the lowest account you can have is like $20. I mean, it's ridiculous and it, it's, it's amazing. So that's why I'm doing this today. Um, I, if you wanna learn more, please send me a message or leave a, a comment down below. Hey, Carrie, thank you so much for joining. Or if you look in the description above or below this video, there is a link to my page, Daily Wealth Ninja. If you like that page and be sure to follow it, because those are two different things, um, then you will get notifications from my page whenever I post anything new. And if you send that page this message, uh, 5DBC, if you send it this message right here, you will actually be... Um, subscribe to my messenger list. I only send it send messages out on occasion, um, so I'm not going to spam you. Just send this message to that page, and you will get um, a free five-day boot camp with some of the basics about Forex. What I also have done for this is that when you um, get involved, you can join my free group where I will also answer questions as well as make sure that you understand the content because you can learn everything under the sun, but unless you actually understand it, it's not going to sink in, right? You have to um, take action and, and build that skill set, right? It's like a muscle. So be sure to send me that message on my Daily Wealth Ninja Facebook page. And then let's go ahead and get started with the training for the day. Make sure I have everything in here. Uh, 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 uh. Oh, also, um, when you do that and invite you to my group, you will not be able to, to work to work on the homework, <laughs> as it were, until you're approved in the group. So if you don't get a response, uh, get a message from me personally, uh, Cassandra, then uh, saying that you're that you're involved, please send me one or send one to the to the page so I can make sure you are accepted. 
So first things first, let's go ahead and share my screen. Oh, not that one. There we go. Share screen. Okay. So first thing I wanted to do was I wanted to go over a review of what's happened since last week. And actually, before I do that, let me make sure I can see comments here. Perfect. Okay. Oh, no. Okay, that works. All right. So review of what happened since last week. So last week, these are the trades that I took. I was not very active. I was not very disciplined in this last week. I had a lot going on, which is an excuse. Um, but near the end of the week, I, I stayed with it and I made sure I got a few more in. And because I did that, I actually, even though those three um, below the three red ones that you see, actually, I don't know why I'm just trying to explain this to you. I have this open for a reason. Oh, no. Sorry, I forgot to enable that. <laughs> hey, Angie, thanks for joining. So as I was trying to say, even though I had these three losses, I still came out with a 1.5% account increase because what I did was I ensured I had proper risk management and every trade that I took, whatever stop loss I had, which I think was 10 pips, I put 1% of my account into that. Now I am trading demo because right now I am testing some things. I'm not very confident um, that this particular strategy is going to be successful. But so far with some of the tweaks that I've made recently, it seems to be very pretty um, consistent. So, um, cause I looked at these later and, and I'll show you what happened with uh, the trades that I took. So this is, um, again, this is Past results are not typical. They do not guarantee nor, nor dictate your future success. I'm simply sharing with you what happened with my choices and why I made those choices. All right, so this was the EuroCAD. So this was the one, the first one that I that I um, got. And what you can see here is that it actually exited out and I was not paying attention. Like you, you don't have to always be paying attention to the charts, um, but if you, first of all, you have to be, you have to be okay with whatever you've invested. Basically, it's like what my mom used to say whenever you lend money to people, don't expect it back. You know, just don't expect it back. And so when you're doing, doing investments like stock and Forex and crypto, you have to just not expect it back. You have to be as unattached to it as possible. So that's why they say, do not invest, you know, your whole life savings in something like this, right? You have to do something that's practical and useful and, um, specific to your situation. So this one I had put in and I don't know what time this was. It says nine o'clock. So nine o'clock at night, I was probably working on other business things at the time. And around midnight is when it got um, stopped out. So I did lose this one. Um, this one, ah, so this one I got, well, wait a minute, is this one? Oh, I know what happened with this one. Is that wait, Eurocad? No, that can't be the right one. I must have gone. Oh, <laughs> okay. So sorry. So as you can see here, I did two with Eurocad. One, 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 and one lost. So that's what I'm showing here. So this one right here, which is the same one as this one right here. They, that one won. That one actually won within like 30 minutes. So in 30 minutes, I earned 1% of my account with that trade. The second one here that I put in, that's the one that I wasn't watching, that's the one that um, stopped out. Now, as you can see here, uh, as you can see here, it was green on this particular bar, but then it changed to red. I, I know it looks like it started on this one, but I think it actually started over this one. You'll, you'll see it lower if, if you're on the one minute chart. But as you can see, it changed to red. So if I've been watching, I might have still gotten out um, with at least some positive for that. But this one was um, one that went out. This one was also a failure. Uh, it's not a failure, a learning experience, right? So 
what I saw here with this triangle, which I guess is kind of hard to see with that red. I wonder if I can make it. Is that better? I think that's better. So there was this triangle that looked like it was a bearish triangle forming, but I got in too early. I actually got in right here. So this little green box here. And I shouldn't have, and here's why. So first of all, the 200 EMA, is that the 200? Yeah, the 200 EMA close, I think, um, set a buy. So yeah, I should not have even gotten in at that at all. And the bar was green. I think it was flipping green when this happened. I may not have seen that. But I mean, two clear signs that this should not have been a sell. So it went up and then it actually went down like I was expecting it to, just the triangle had not yet completely formed. Okay. Uh, what else is, can I see from here? All right. So the Australian dollar, US dollar, AUD, USD. So as you can see from this, yep, same type of deal. So on 15 minute, it shows it was a green 250. Um, it was still red here. So that was kind of the gamble that I was taking. I'm sure there were other things going on. Ah, uh, yes. So these were red bars. They were getting smaller because these are the Hakanashi. They were getting smaller, so that's an indication of a, of a change in trend. So that should have been a sign for me. And that's why that one uh, did not um, bring income for me. So here, this one only got in profit because I saw that it was changing. Um, so right here, this box... Somewhere about here is when it changed. Okay. Let me get closer. So just for those that are not aware of my trading style. Hey, thanks so much for joining. This, these green dash lines are part of what's called a pitchfork. These are what help me pinpoint some of my more accurate trades. And... When I got in, the 200 EMA, the 50 EMA were both red. The HTFFA, I think, with bands um, was also red. So everything, and, um, and when you'll see over here, I wonder if I can, will it let me? No, it won't. Oh, it will. It's just slow. So I believe this is going to show you that it was red Heikinashi candles at the time of this. Oh, maybe not. I can't tell. Okay, so wait. Well, whatever. It doesn't matter. I don't want to waste your time. So at some point, it was somewhere around here that I saw that it was in profit and over 50% of the way through. So I went, oh great, I'm going to move my stop loss up so that if it does stop out when I'm not looking, it at least gets something. So I think I did like a pip, pip and a half. Um, some of my mentors that if you want access to, just let me know, send me a message. But some of the mentors that I've, I've um, been speaking with, they say two to three pips. Um, I have not checked into this yet, but a theory is that the 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 commission is taken out at the beginning right and so when you put in your um your trade i believe that's included and so at the time that you you did it so sometimes let, let's say that you were in a buy sometimes you'll it'll say that it's like let's say 1.303 and when you put it in it says that you started it at a lower lower pip number. I think that's part of the calculations. So if someone knows the answer to that, please let me know. I am not certain. That's my theory. I haven't figured out how to find that out yet, though. <laughs> so like I said, somewhere about there, I saw that it was low enough that I wanted to make sure that I didn't get stopped out, which I'm really glad I did. And right here, 
you see that the HTFFA with bands changed from a red to a green, meaning, hey, this is going to go up, and it did. And it went through the EMA, which it flipped then, right? Um, it all it went all the way to the 200 EMA, which didn't flip, and it went back down, right? And then it's now, at least at this point, going further and further down. So that's why I came out in the green or the blue with this one. So on this trade, this was the GBP JPY or Great British Pound Japanese Yen. And on this one, I saw that although the 50 EMA was red and the 200 EMA was red, um, something about this, ah, I was looking at this particular indicator down here. So this is an indicator that is in, uh, included with the membership to the club, the Forex club that I'm a part of. And I use it for getting into my in, in, entries for my 15 minute and my one minute. And the reason why is because it's an indicator that has like over 20 other indicators all within it. And so when it tells you something, or as long as you follow the rules, when it tells you something, it's because 20 plus indicators all say, yes, this is an indication of a buy. This is an indication of a sell. And that's pretty cool to have 20, 28 indicators in one on your screen. So I use this for my entries mostly. I think I've used it for some exits too. And so what's happening is at the close of this candle, yes, the close of this candle, this was green, which means, hey, this is a change. It's going to be going upward. So even though it hadn't yet changed here or here or here, I it indicated to me that it's going to go up. So I got in and in less than, really less than 30 minutes, probably even less than 15, that hit my take profit, which because of my, the way that I trade, I put in 1% of my account into my trades. Um, because I did one-to-one -one ratio and because I did 1% inside of that uh, 10 pip stop loss, I actually made 1% in 10 pips with this specific trade. Again, pastel is not typical. They do not guarantee nor dictate your future results. I'm simply sharing with you what I've done on my journey. So that's that one. And again, I also saw the Heikinashi candles. They were all green. I saw, I was not yet here when this flipped. Um, so I actually got in earlier than that. So that's pretty cool. All right. So the next one. Ah, yes. So with this one, it had actually broken out of a consolidation phase. Looks like it came back up and, and just came in. So this was more of a fake out breakout. But when this happened, it was currently in a buy uh, with this, this bottom indicator. The HTTFA or whatever with bands was also green. Um, I think it was still red here on the 50 and here on the 200 when I got in. But... Yeah, I don't know. I think that was it. I think I was just, I just used this indicator for this one for that. Uh, nope, because Hakanashi candles were also a green here. And right here is where the MACD switched. So that's why that one was a buy. And that one also got me 1%. Again, past results not typical and do not guarantee nor dictate your future success. <laughs> so on this one, same deal, right? Uh, the box is right here. Oh, I guess this is the same one. Sorry about that. So wait, last week. So this is this is the part where um, am I covering it? I guess I am. This is the part where I'm really excited about because as part of the membership, to this Forex club that I'm a part of, I get access to a really cool tool called the Harmonic Scanner. And basically, at any time that the markets are open, it has the opportunity for you to find some very powerful patterns. These are things called harmonic patterns. Basically, it's like woo-woo happening, not even kidding, and Fibonacci is all in it, and it's like, wow, you don't have to be a math person to do this. You don't have to be a tech person to do this. I mean, it just does it for you. And so what I do is I look at what I've started doing is I'm looking at it every every weekend. I've been doing this for a couple of weeks now, and it's been very helpful. 
So instead of looking at this every day like I was trying to do, I take some time during the weekend and I look at all the ones that are there and I compare them to what I did the week before. This has been great for me because not only am I getting that um, experience, even though it's not necessarily every day, I'm setting, I'm creating these setups and these are setups that I can use for weeks. It's been amazing, right? So I use this to make my setups for the week and then I and then I take some time, I have been taking some time every day um, to at least look at the charts and see what might be something really quick that I might be able to pick up. So the one on the left is what what, what, what it looked like last week. Whew. The one on the right is what it looks like this week. As you can see, the list grew, like almost doubled in size. The ones in green, I think maybe one or two others, but the ones in green were the ones from the prior week and the others are brand new. Hey, thanks for joining. Oh, I got to do this. There we go. Okay, so Australian dollar, Japanese yen on the one hour. This was a shark that was called on this tool. So um, what's really cool about this tool, and let me change the color on here. Can you see this? Perfect. What's cool about this tool is it also tells you take profits. It tells you, so these three are take profits. It tells you entry, so where to get in if the price is inside, and stop loss. Now, obviously, this is not telling you that this is um, telling you how to invest your money. It's telling you, hey, based off of these numbers and this past historical data that we're doing all for you via the computer, this is what we think is it's going to happen. Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it goes in the opposite direction. But this is so much more infinitely better than trying to spend all of your time trying to find this powerful, powerful um, uh, pattern. So I can't give the numbers to you because some of these are actually current ones. Like there's some of these that, that were drawn like a week or two ago. Some of these are about to be like magic money. <laughs> um, and because of, you know, copyright infringements or SEC, I don't know. I want to make sure that I'm covering myself and, and not um, getting myself in trouble. So I have hidden the numbers on the right side, not only to protect the company that is providing this as a service to its members, but also for myself to make sure that I'm not um, doing you a disservice by making it, uh, giving you something that may not be accurate to what currently is happening right now when you watch this video. So this is one of the ones that was called um, as of the time that I was looking at this particular tool. And um, it gives you the point in time, when, to, when it took, um, and all that. And so what I use this tool for is I then draw these vertical lines here at those points, and then I transfer it to my trading view. And from there, I do additional um, work. So I look, so basically, um, and if you want this checklist, let me know, send me a message, or leave the comment checklist down below, or send me a message on Date Daily Wealth Ninja, right? We get, the, get that too. Um, but I will give you the checklist of what I look for when I'm doing these trades, because I basically go from a, a bigger overview and by doing that and bringing it down to smaller ones, I have an idea of where it's probably going to go and a lot more accurate to the minute uh, data from there. So this is one that was called for the Australian dollar Japanese yen. This is what it looks like. I, I know this is a lot here. Don't freak. I'm going to tell you what's happening here, okay? So first of all, this right here and all these green lines right here and here and here and here and all these ones that go all the way up okay including this really long one right here this is what's called a pitchfork this pitchfork is magical so magical i mean it's it's ridiculous and it's green because it's going up no other reason other than that i have another one down here that's white that has all these lines right and it's based off of this pitchfork. I'm sorry, this harmonic pattern that was called, okay? So it's that exact same pattern that I just showed you on the previous screen with additional stuff to it. So the pitchforks, um, it's got the 50 EMA, 200 EMA, my PSARs, we've got the daily channel here, right? There's a lot here, but as you start to, to use these and see how they work, it's, 
it's so amazing. It makes things so much easier. It's my opinions. So there are some people who play, who do naked forex, which is basically they don't have much on their screens at all, if may, except maybe trend lines and stop, support and resistance. I can't do that. I prefer to have very um, accurate pinpointed trades personally. And I'm sure they, they get pinpointed trades too, but I just, I'm a numbers girl. What can I say? All right. So um, right here, this looks to me, was oh, this last week? This is still last week. So that's where, where I saw it last week. Uh, more on this, a little bit closer so you can see what's going on. Australian dollar, New Zealand dollar, four hour, one hour shark. This wasn't last week, this was this week. Yeah, my bad, sorry. This is what it looks like as of the, the screenshot. Okay, so... <clears throat> It looks like it's going to potentially bounce off. We have red Heikinashi candles indicating it's going to go down. So if it doesn't, because they're red, I'm more expecting it to actually go through here and kind of crash. <clears throat> because usually when they cross the EMAs, they are going to keep going. Um, I'll see if I can find the percentage on that sometime. But the red Heikinashi candles are saying a sell. It's hitting the, um, not only the bar on the pitchfork, but it's also hitting the two EMA. So this is a really big, powerful intersection right here. So it looks like it's going to be going into a cell. Australian dollar, Japanese yen. It's the it's same, it's same one before. It's just a little bit closer so you can see it. A little bit closer. This is the one that actually shows the candles. So Australian dollar, New Zealand dollar, this is on the four hour, one hour. So this is what it looked like, right? It's followed that same process. Draw it all, draw it all, draw it all. I draw it all, draw it all my stuff. And <laughs> um, we see that it's actually staying within, it's kind of consolidating right now, actually. So it came up here and it's kind of within this box, right? Indications of it's, coming past the pitchfork and uh, this is the same data from the week before so that's really really cool Oops. again closer information so you can see what's going on uh, this one is the Australian New Zealand dollar shark it's indication it's supposed to be going up which it is right we see price moving within the lines until it tries to get up to the median, which is this line right here, and it comes back down even further than when it started coming up right about here, right? And that's part of what pitchforks do, which is awesome. Then it started to come back up and it went back down. So it's probably going to keep going down because, again, of because of those rules. And it looks like it's playing within just this bottom rung of the pitchfork. And we also see that the Heikinashi candles are red, so and as well as the MACD is going in a downward direction, so it looks like it's probably going to be going to sell. Australian dollar, US dollar, four hour deep crab. This is from last week, right? This, this is last week. We can see what happened. It did a massive crash right here. Whoever saw that probably made some pretty good money if they caught it all the way down. <clears throat> we see that it crossed the 200 EMA here. Uh, it, cr it hit to the pip, it looks like. Um, not only a trend line on the daily, but also the pitchfork on this four hour. We see that it's potentially crossing again, so we'll have to watch that if it keeps going up. Australian dollar, US dollar, butterfly, right? Same deals here. So these are still things that I'm looking at. And I really want to get through to getting more in depth into some because this is just the same stuff over and over again. Um, I do, however, teach this to my team. So if you want to know more information, please send me a message or leave a comment below. So again, here's more about this, and you can see, right? So actually, let me let me st take a step back. So this one, 
the Euro Australian dollar actually had two, right? It had a four hour and a one hour. This is important because if you have two of them, you need to make sure that they have the same data. Why do I say this? Because if you look at the four hour and the one hour, they might have the same data points, but sometimes they're just slightly off by like maybe an hour or two, because when you go into the one hour chart, it breaks that four hour chart into four more bars. So you have four opportunities to be somewhere else. So, so the, extra one hour gives you a lot more ability to be really pinpoint accurate, which you want to be when you're trading, right? You want to minimize your risk, excuse, yeah, minimize your risk and maximize your ROI. So that was the four hour. Here's the one hour where I had to move some stuff around so that would be more accurate. And you can see that when I did that, it's playing around those bars, right? So here's the um, same one, right? Here's the, here's the view with the Heiken Ashi bars and the MACD. It's looking like it's uh, reversing here. It's a little hard to tell with the Heiken Ashi, but it, it got smaller and smaller and now it's kind of consolidating. So it might be a turn here before it got to the median, which if that's the case, it's going to shoot back up most likely. And then here's what it looks like side by side. Ooh, which this would be a perfect example, right? So <clears throat> it hit the one hour um, 200 moving average, which is the same spot that the Heiken Ashi looks like it might be changing. So that's a good indication that this is going to go up. Zero AUD on this one. I don't know. I didn't write that down. Oh, well. <clears throat> so that's that. So EuroCAD two weeks before, this is what it looked like. I'm just gonna kind of bruise through here. You can kind of see that I saw some signs here of a potential bearish pennant, which it turned out to be correct. That was a nice pat on the back for myself. I was pretty excited. Uh, last week, again, it was right. That bearish pennant turned into a very big um, descending of this price action for EuroCAD. Lots of stuff, don't worry about it. I'll go into this in their training. Quarter theory is amazing, you should check it out. But as you can see, it played within the quarter theory lines. It played within a lot of other things. Um, bearish pennant worked out just fine. So now this week we had the four hour and one hour. This is what it looks like. Again, same deal as before, right? We see that it's crossed the EMA a couple of times. Now it's on its way down. It's so close to the edge here. I would be more, I'm expecting it to go come some, sometime soon, come back up. Right now it's a huge drop, so I'm not um, I'm not hopeful of it going up anytime soon. But we'll see, right? It changes side by side. But as you can see here, now that it's side by side, it has hit those bands on whatever they're called on the pitchfork, and we have a green candle forming on that red Heikenashi candle. So. Okay. Now it did turn into, it did flip here, um, but we shall see what's going on with that. Okay. EuroCAD one hour, so on the smaller scale, more, right? We see it's still still red, still red. Yep. Euro NZD. Okay. Right. Good. Same stuff. Red. Looks like it's going to go down. Looks like it's going to go down. So these patterns are actually indication of that as well. So this, let's see, what was it called, a bat? Bats, um, harmonic scans are indications that the price is going to go down. And confirmation so far has shown that these are doing exactly what they're expected to do. Going down, going down, going down. That still looks like it's supposed to be going down. So this is from at least two weeks ago, because that's when I started actually doing all this, right? It is still going. This is pretty, pretty amazing, in my opinion, right? Now it's together. We see that it's below the <coughs> um, two, excuse me, 50 EMA, which is also red. So it's indication of it going down. The 200 EMA is right here. So it could go down and hit that and come back up or keep going, right? It's playing around here within these price ranges. GBP CAD, right, going down, looks like it's good, 
Red Nakanashi, right? We're looking at all this. Uh, <clears throat> this is one that um, I had to move the pitchforks again because it made it more accurate from the four hour, right? GBPY, same deal. Now this one was interesting because it was, it, this formed within a consolidation box that I had made and it looks like it's starting to break out, right? So right here, in this corner, it looks like it's continuing to go up, which is interesting because this is supposed to be going down. Oops, I didn't draw on that one. Oh, well, uh, this should be a pitchfork. Sorry. And this one should be a pitchfork this direction. I don't know why it's not drawing. All right. So like I said, oh, that's because I... <laughs> came back later to show you something. <laughs> My bad. So, oh no, what just happened? That's fun. Okay. So this orange box is here because inside of here, there was a pattern that had formed last week that had this pitchfork going this direction, which is um, actually what happened, right? It went up and broke through up to this point, and now it's coming back down, which is what the current call looks like, right? This is the exact same call with the pitchfork going this direction. And we can see that right there, it got really close to those crossing pitchforks and shot back up. So these are ways for you to have other support and resistance lines that are invisible to, to you when, you ha when you're doing naked trading, which is why I don't really want to do naked trading. <laughs> um, MACD shows it's in a cell. The current Hikonashis are, are a buy, but it's right at the top of the pitchfork, so it's likely to come right back down. All right, so here's that. More of the same, just on a smaller time frame, GP and Z. So this is more, uh, let's see, this one's probably going to keep going because it just broke EMA. Haganashis are red and MACD's in, been flipped. It is at the edge of a line on the pitchfork, so it might go back up as a resistance, excuse me, support. So this was two weeks ago. This was last week. <clears throat> so this is what this week. So it's the same same harmonic pattern. So for two weeks now, this is what it looks like <clears throat> now that a week has gone by. So we see it was a very strong sell here. It flipped about almost to the median and because it didn't hit the median, I believe it's 85% of the time, it goes back up and actually past the point that it started. So it's, I'm expecting it to go back up to here. Again, could be wrong. Things change. I don't see any news. And I'm not Miss Cleo. Um, but percentage-wise, based off somebody else's studies being done, um, I'm expecting it to do that. <clears throat> at least, at least back up to here. <laughs> All right, so more of the same. This is the Takanashi candles. We see that it is becoming green or is green, right? As where it changed from a downtrend to an uptrend, we see the Takanashi candles went green. It's looking like it's flipping down on the MACD, which is pretty cool. And then side by side, right? <clears throat> so this one is the one hour of the same. So that's actually pretty nifty. And DDUSD looks like it's going to continue to go up. P -SARs are, um, parabolic SARs are also on the bottom, meaning it's indication of a buy. MACD shows on the buy. Uh, Heikinashi candles are major buy. So this one to me, I'm thinking it's going to keep going up, especially uh, you all see that the, the um, harmonic scanner pattern shows that it's going up. Last one of the overall review here. USDCHF, <clears throat> this one is only like, 
only like 20, 30, maybe, maybe 40 pips. I don't know. 30 to 40 pips. This one I'm, I may not actually get into um, just because I don't know how fast this one runs. But this is another opportunity for you to learn, right? If you're not sure, I'll, you can always use your demo account. So right now this one looks like it's going to be going up. Even though that the 50 EMA is a red, um, this pattern, these patterns are so powerful, right? So we'll see. Something to watch. <clears throat> Hakanashi candles just keep saying down, so most likely it'll go down to the bottom of this pitchfork right here. Uh, we do have a weekly support and resistance line right here, so it's very possible it could keep going down. Again, you just have to do your own work um, and ask and do and research. Hi, Aunt Sharon. Thanks for joining. <clears throat> so that's what it looks like. A little bit closer. So current session is the Tokyo session. Okay, um, as you can see here, this is the different centers. And let me make sure that you can actually see me, or I can see. Yeah, uh, we'll do this. Boom. <laughs> so current session is Tokyo. As you can see, um, the Germany, London, um, New York, those are currently closed. Today it is the first day of the week for Forex. They are open 24 hours a day, five days a week. And right now it is the Tokyo session, also known as the Asian session. Um, Sydney, Australia is also involved with that. But um, right now the major session is Tokyo. So these are the three pairs that I'm actually going to go a little bit diver in, diving into a little bit deeper than the four hour and one hour like I just showed you. Sorry, I'm getting a little bit. Let me take a, let me, uh, yeah, I'm just going to get some water here. So, <laughs> so I chose these three um, for a few reasons. And I wanted to use this opportunity to teach you a little bit about the Tokyo session because I am so grateful that I have access to this system that I do. It not only is, does it provide you the education about Forex, but it also gives you live training sessions with mentors that you can have direct interaction with, get your questions answered basically any day of the week. I mean, there's, I think, over 60 hours every week live for you to be able to learn some techniques and, and all that, and it's recorded. So, I mean, that's awesome. There's also the community that I'm part of that I can I can ask questions when it's not those sessions. But right now, um, this is something that I've I've seen people struggle with, myself included. People tend to think that oh I can only trade the London session because that's going to be the most sessions and I'm going to get the most pips and yada yada yada. I have a training on this already, so if you want it, let me know. I've, if you're watching this on YouTube, I'll repurpose it and there'll be a um, a, a, a link to this training. But basically, the number of pips really don't matter. If you understand how to do your um, risk management, then if you are part of the new, tra uh, new trading paradigm, you can actually, let's say, for example, and, I'll, and I went over it earlier, right? I had trades that were 10 pip stop loss, 10 pip take profit, one to one ratio. Because I had 1% in that 10 pips, I had a 1% return on that trade with 10 pips where people, some people are like, Oh my gosh, I just got 50 pips, but they had a 20 pip stop loss. That means that they had to do two and a half times the work, right? Oh no, excuse me. Yeah. Yeah. They had to do, they had to do two times the work to get the same increase, right? So, so if you have a 20 pip stop loss in 1%, you have to have 20 pips to, to get a 1% increase. So it does not matter when you trade. You have to trade what's best for your um, schedule, right? And while, yes, there are some pairs that trade really crazy during those sessions, if you understand how to, how to actually look at a chart and, you know, follow a strategy that works, it doesn't matter what trading session it is. There might be some some strategies that are specifically for a, a particular trading session, but for the most part, the things that I'm teaching you and the, and the things that I'm learning inside of this community and this, this um, um, membership, it doesn't matter. So let's talk about this Tokyo session. Let me go ahead and uh, get my notes here. Oh, there we go. So first of all, oops, 
Why are these three pairs? It's because we're in the Tokyo session, right? So let's talk about it. The Tokyo session starts at 12 a.m. GMT, which is, I think, Greenwich, Green, I think Greenwich median time. I don't know. Um, which is six hours ahead of me, which means that at my time at um, 5 p.m. is when it opens. <clears throat> so... That, so this this site you can just Google it Forex trading session times or whatever and it can it can create it uh, show you what's open right now. Now since we're in this session, I want to make sure that I'm using the pairs that are most likely to be winners for me. And those three will have New Zealand dollar or NZD, Australian dollar AUD, and Japanese yen JPY. I'll go into reasons why in just a moment. So the Tokyo session is also known as the Asian session. Um, the reason for this is because uh, Tokyo is the cap is the financial capital of Asia, but there are other countries in there, right? Japan is also the third largest forex trading center in the entire world, so they're kind of a big deal. <laughs> Yen is the third most traded currency. In fact, 16.5 percent of all forex trades include the Japanese yen, and 21% of the ones in the Tokyo session are are um, Japanese yen. In the Tokyo session, the main participants are commercial um, companies such as exporters and central banks. Now, most forex things are actually run by central banks because they're the ones that move the money. You and I, or at least I assume you, I'm sure you're not, a, I'm sure most people watching this are not bankers, or at least bankers that are trading Forex. Um, the thing about this is, is that retail traders, which would be like someone like myself, uh, we don't we don't move the market. We don't have even like a drip, a drop in the ocean of Forex. All we're doing is looking to kind of like, um, I wouldn't say steal scraps from the table, but leverage your knowledge to make money from it, right? You know, obviously, pastoral is not typical, and they don't, they, don't, they don't dictate nor guarantee your future success. But when you know how to read the markets and you're not trying to outwit, outwit the man, right, you don't let your ego get in the way, you can make some, a lot of pips and therefore potentially a lot of profit by following the markets. So central banks and commercial companies are main participants. Um, within the Tokyo session, it has thin liquidity. So what is liquidity? Forex liquidity is the ability to be bought or sold without causing significant change in your exchange rate. So if a, um, the way that I understand this is that if a currency pair is moving within these two lines here, right? So let me see, does that explain it? Yeah, so when you have thin liquidity, you're stuck within a range. And that's also known as a ranging market or consolidation. So since the Tokyo session has thin liquidity, we would normally expect these currency pairs to be stuck within the consolidation areas. It's likely to be stronger movement with Asia Pacific um, currency pairs such as Australian dollar, US dollar, the New Zealand dollar, US dollar versus non-Asia Pacific such as Great British pound, US dollar. One of the, the times that it most um, that most action takes place is in the beginning of this session, so closer to 5 p.m. Central for myself. This is when most of the economic data is released. And moves within the section, session actually dictate the tone of the rest of the day for most of the other sessions. Now, although this is the first session to open, it's not always suggested that you trade these first few hours or first day of Forex for many reasons. But one of them is that after big moves in the New York session, which opens sometime later, right, you may see consolidation within the Tokyo session based off of movements from New York. So as I said, the three major pairs in the Tokyo session are the um, Australian dollar, New Zealand dollar, and Japanese yen. So of the list that I saw, I felt like the Australian dollar, US dollar, New Zealand CAD, and 
uh, GJ, I'll just start calling them that, GJ, um, were the ones that were most likely to be ready to pop. Um, also, with Japanese yen or JPY, there could be more movement with them because when the Japanese yen is changing, it's because it's changing hands as businesses change money between hands. Uh, one last thing to add to this is that whatever comes out of China uh, makes the big moves in this market. So that's something to keep an eye on for if you're a, what's it called? <laughs> News trader. <laughs> All right, so that is why I chose the three ones that I wanted to share with you today. So let's go ahead and check that out. So the first one, oh, no, I want to show you one more. Sorry, my bad. Slideshow, front current slide. So I also have a, a free app, Easy PSAR, that tells me when um, the pair box stars have flipped. And right now, I also chose these two right here, Australian dollar, New Zealand dollar, because it shows a sell on the 30 minute for the Australian dollar and a sell on the New Zealand CAD for the 15 minute. All right, so AUD USD. So let's go ahead and look at this. I've already gone through and added in um, my daily, monthly, weekly stuff, four hour, etc. So right now I'm just looking at it as is from the 15 minute section. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. All right. So on the 15 minutes, I see that there is an opportunity. to have a pair of, uh, excuse me, a parallel channel here. Oh. I forgot it does that. Uh, it's not locked. Come on, there we go. All right. So I'm putting this on here to try and get as many of the wigs as possible and to kind of get a better visualization of how everything is going. So right now, this is the four hour trend line <clears throat> that I had. So if we go back to four hour. Oh, that trend line needs to change. So I have that trend line that has, although it came out here, this was a fake fake out breakout, there it hit here, it hit here, and it looks like it's going down. With this, Still four hours, sorry. One hour. Wait a minute, did that color change? Yeah. So four hour looks like it's got a sell. Could be going to the 50 EMA. Daily upward. 
those greens on the emays. Trend line of up, trend line of up in 15. So 15 minute is actually when I start to be able to use one of those fancy indicators. Oh, this is 30. Um, that my membership allows me access to. So right now we see a buy on the 20 EMA, a buy on the 200, and a buy down here. So this one looks like it's going to be a buy. So let me go ahead and make a quick note of that. So I can do my own stuff later and not tell you what I'm doing because it is based off of your level of risk, your level of appetite, and I will tell you how my trade goes out later. All right, so this one looks like it should be a buy. So let's go down to the one minute. One minute looks like it should be a buy, awesome. All right, so let's go ahead and go to the other one, <clears throat> New Zealand CAD. So let me tell you how I would do this at least, right? So um, depending on what Forex lot calculator. <clears throat> so one of the benefits to the membership that I, I use for my Forex education and my tools um, is by one of my mentors who has an Excel spreadsheet and it's amazing. But if you need something really quick, this is really, really handy to have. So what this is, is you, you can, whatever your account currency is, mine's in US dollars, you would choose that. Give your account size. So if you had $1,000, you could do that. If you only had $100, you could use that. How much risk you want. So how much you're willing to invest in this particular trade. Um, I usually use 1% or less. Depends, again, on your level of risk. Um, stop loss and pips, depending on how good you are and how strongly you believe that's going to go in your direction, you can say whatever pips you want to take, and then you choose your pair. So since this is Australian dollar, US dollar, you do that, you click calculate, and then down here is when you can see how many lots you would put for that trade to have a 1% risk every however many pips you put into your stop loss. So that's how you effectively do your trading so that you can get more in your trade than somebody else in the exact same trade. So, all right, that's how I would do it. Looks like it's starting to go in the cell though. Check that out, right? It's not yet there. This has not closed yet and it has not been been read. So it's still likely to keep going, especially because these, these EMAs are acting like um, support resistance. So the other one, next one is New Zealand dollar CAD. Oh wait, no, we weren't done with that yet. Australian dollar, US dollar. So I think this one should be a buy. This one just needs to be there. New Zealand CAD. And JP, GVP, JPY. Oh, is that why that one? Probably. No. Okay. So let's go ahead and go to GVP, JPY. No, wait, I wasn't done. <laughs> oh my gosh, sorry. All right. So this is the left side of my screen. I also use this side to make my trades or to make my decisions. So as you can see, the Heikinashi candles went from red to green. Even though the MACD currently has red on top, which is an indication of a sell, we have lots of signs that it's going to go up, except for that right there. So it could still keep going down, but we have lots of signs it's going up. The green Heikinashi, however, are slowing down, so we'll see. Ooh. Oh, so it has flipped. So I'm glad I didn't take my trade yet because I'm not yet, this is not yet. Oh, that's, oh, that might be different. Let's make sure we're both on the same trades here. Well, there you go. That explains that. So let me explain what just happened. 
it's so important you have the right trading uh, view stuff up. So right now they're both on the 15. We see that although the, the price is red, the 200 EMA is green, the bar is green, so this is still an indication of a buy. The PSARs are on top, which is an indication of a sell, and we're in the upward trend of the 15 minute. Okay. And that same token, right, like I just said, we have that green, but it's starting to come back around. Still on here, all that. If we go to the one minute, we see that everything says sell. Everything, everything right now says sell. So you can probably get in here and likely, I still would wait. I would wait because it's right here at this line. If it breaks through and, you know, the next candle ends below it, then maybe I would keep getting in depending on whatever else is there. But right now, I'm not so sure that this is the best place to get in because you could be getting a lot of slush. Because, again, right now, the one minute is in a cell, a really decent cell, but your 15 minute, all signs are saying buy except for MACD and, and your PSARs. So this one, uh, I, th I think it's going to be ABD USD. I'm still pretty sure it's going to be a, gr a, a buy, but I'm going to wait until that one minute gets a little bit more um, in my favor. Because look, like I said, it just now went through that 20 EMA. We have a green uh, bar. It still shows red over here. So it could still keep going. So I'm going to wait. So the next one is GBP JPY. We'll start with the bigger picture first. And I'm missing some things. I apologize. Let me go ahead and turn some of these on. Um, yeah, so this one, um, it's not completed yet and I can't change it because there is a, uh, well, I just, I'm not going to change it. There's a reason for it. And, um, this particular indicator, um, has to have a password and if I ch make the changes then I actually have to give you the password because I can't hide that information when I'm live so sorry about that if you want that access let me know but right now I can at least turn it on so you can see the current piece of it because I always have it set to two things one the line that you see so this one right here the one that's actually going through the price this one right here that one that's part of that indicator. Okay. So right now it's fl it's trying to flip. It's currently it wasn't a red up here, but it looks like it's trying to flip. Let's go to zoom out. Zoom out. So we see quarters theory happening. Bounced off of it. One hour, bounced off of the two, uh, 50 EMA. Our bands is indicating that it's going to go down. It's hitting the weekly support resistance, so it could keep going down. Thirty minutes indicate that it's going down. Fifteen indicates that it's a buy. So I would wait to get in on this one until after it passes the weekly support resistance. Probably 10 pips. Just based off of what I'm seeing here. Again, I'm not a financial advisor. <laughs> Do your own research. Invest in your own education. 
um, but it is playing around on that EMA right there and we see that it's green down here. So 15 minutes says green. The HTTFA with bands though says red, so I would wait before getting in until that one changed to green. On the one minute, it actually recently changed to red, so that's, that's interesting. But we do see that it's red down here, so I wouldn't get in on this one just yet unless I was going for a sell, because this looks like it's stacking out to be a pretty decent little 10 pip sell. Because if it's gonna be a sell, it's usually gonna try and come right back to here, which if that's the case, oh, that's only two pips. It's not a lot of pips. Is it really only two pips? Yeah. So it could go there. I don't know that that's worth it from, from that uh, because you've got commissions, you've got other stuff <clears throat> that you have to um, look into. But if it goes down to the quarter, like it's expected to, again, the quarter theory, right? Uh, you could potentially earn 10 pips because <clears throat> it's playing within those, those lines. So I would say for GBP, JPY, it's currently in a buy, that's in a sell. It's a sell, sell, sell. I would be more leaning towards possibly being a sell for a few pips on this one. Uh, that 15 minute though. That 15 minutes the green, so uh, I would wait. I would wait to see if it passes that weekly or if it bounces back to go down, because this is just, this, there's not enough confirmations one way or another for this to really be something that I would get in right now. So we'll just put that at orange. And then NZD CAD. And then after this, we will wrap up. So NZD CAD, let's go ahead and start with the four hour. So we see that it's traveling within that harmonic scan, harmonic pattern that came from that tool that I use. Right, it looks kind of awkward that way. Let's do this. Okay, so we see here that it looks like it just flipped the 200 EMA on the four hour. The bands on the green here, the support and resistance trend line is good. The two, excuse me, the 50 EMA is moving up, but it is still a red indication of, of a cell here. Parabolic stars say it's cell. It flipped here on the MACD. We have green, uh, um, Hikanashi. So on the four hour, this looks like it's supposed to be a buy. On the one hour, buy, buy, it's about on a support resistance, buy, that candle went low, that's a buy. One hour looks like it's a buy. Let's go to the 15. So the 15 still looks like a cell. So on the bigger one, it looks like a cell. We have green here and here, which could keep this going up. So I'm not too, too disparate. So we see that the, the bands were green up to here, which is about the time that, let's do this this way. So right here is when the parabolic stars flipped. Looks like, maybe it went a little lower, but it, they flipped at least. 
and it went from a downtrend to an uptrend. The HEFA was still green for going up. When it broke through the 50 EMA, it turned red, but turned green again as it came back up. It hit the four hour support and resistance line. Two hundred EMA is green and it's flat, so we're we're likely in a consolidation phase. Here is when it turned green, green again, and right after we got a red bar, we had a flip and a flip. So we had a flip of the HTFA, we had a flip of the parabolic XRs. <clears throat> Same with the Haikanashi candles, flip here. So right now, everything looks like it should be a sell for the uh, New Zealand dollar, Canadian dollar. On the one minute, looks like a sell, looks like a sell, looks like a very big sell. But so far, I think it would only be a couple of pips. So I would not get in on this one just yet. Let's see, what does it say on the 15? That would be about five pips, maybe. It might go further. Again, it's, it's your level of appetite, your level of risk. I'm, I'm going to say that because I would wait. For me personally, I would wait because right now that's a strong level of support and resistance. It does show red here, which is usually correct, but again, that can change, right? And we've already seen that it's staying along this line here. We see the Haikanashi candles are, they're not consistently longer. So this one I would wait on. So, so those are the in-depth trades that I wanted to share. And that, oh, there we go. So that is that. Thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Cassandra, a.k.a. The Daily Wealth Ninja. If you liked what you saw today, if you think someone should hear it today, please share this with your friends and family. This is a skill set that I believe everyone should learn because if you feed a man a fish, he eats for a day. If you teach a man to fish, he feeds his family for generations because it's a skill set that you can teach people. And this is a skill set that you can teach people, your family, your loved ones, yourself, right? This is something that everyone should know because it's something that anyone can do as long as they have the internet connection and a phone or a computer. So if you want more information, please be sure to connect with me on my Facebook. Uh, there should be a link to Daily Wealth Ninja either above or below this video. Send me a message, 5DBC, to get that free training. So send me this message at Daily Wealth Ninja to get that five-day boot camp. And if you want to learn more about the tools, the mentorship, the community, and the academy that I have access to, send me a message on that as well. I would love to share with you what I've got because I can only do so much. Like I said, I'm a programmer by day. I have a digital marketing agency by night. I am learning Forex as well. So if you want to really like just take off with your own education, you, you need the right tools, the right mentorship, and the right community. So reach out and I will share with you what I'm doing. So thanks so much for watching. Have a wonderful and prosperous rest of your day and I will see you on the next one. Bye.